Call the meeting to order. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Roll call, please. Councilor Clements? Present. Councilor Langevin? Present. Councilor Livingood? Excused. Councilor Micucci? Present. Councilor McDonald? Present. Councilor Nicola? Present. Councilor Regis? Excused. Councilor Spinelli? Here. Councilor Vandal? Present. Seven here, two excused? Thank you. Agenda item number three consider and accept the council minutes of Monday, March 26, 2012 meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Four subcommittee reports, A, general government. Councillor Spinelli. Uh, Madam Chair, I have nothing to report. We have a meeting scheduled uh, for April 25th, Rice Conference Room at 7 p.m. Thank you. B, DPW. Councillor Vandal. Um, I have no report, but I do have a meeting scheduled for Wednesday, April 18, 2012, at 7 p.m. in a Rice Conference Room. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. C, Education and Human Services, Councillor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no minutes. However, we do have a <coughs> meeting on school budget and a number of other items for this Thursday at 7 o'clock in the Rice Conference Room. Thank you. D, Planning and Development. Um, that would be Councillor Livingood, who is excused. I don't believe there are any. Oh, there are. Let me go over the minutes. A meeting of the Planning and Development Subcommittee was held on Monday, April 2nd, in the Rice Conference Room, in attendance with Chairman Livingood, Subcommittee Members Councillor Clements, and Citizen Member Evelyn Petrelli. Also in attendance was Cassandra Ackley. Chairman Livingood called the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Agenda item number one. Vote to approve the appointment of Mark Morin to the Economic Development Commission. A motion was made by Councillor Clements, seconded by Mrs. Petrelli, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the appointment of Mark Morin to the Economic Development Commission for a three-year term effective immediately and through June 30th, 2015. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, three to nothing. Agenda item number two. Vote to approve the appointment of Otto Prohaska to the Economic Development Commission. Motion made by Mrs. Petrelli and seconded by Councillor Clements with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the appointment for a three-year term effective immediately and through June 20, uh, 30, 2015. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, three to nothing. Agenda item number three, vote to approve the appointment of Nancy Kudair to the Economic Development Commission. Motion was made by Councillor Clements and seconded by Mrs. Petrelli with a favorable recommendation to Council um, to approve the appointment. Vote by a show of, um, also for a three-year term effective immediately and through June 30th, 2015. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. Agenda item number four was vote to approve the appointment of James Dyer to the Economic Development Commission. Again, um, a motion was made by Councillor Clements and seconded by Mrs. Petrelli with a favorable recommendation for a three-year term effective immediately and through June 30th, 2015. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. Agenda item number five, vote to approve the appointment of Pierre Pete Knoyer to the Economic Development Commission. A uh, motion was made by Mrs. Petrelli and seconded by Councilor Clements with a favorable recommendation to approve the appointment for a three-year term through uh, effective immediately through June 30th, 2015. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. Agenda item number six, vote to approve the contract with Concord Square Planning and Development for the Downtown Strategic Financing and Implementation Plan Consultant 
wow, Implement, implementation plan consultation services. Mrs. Ackley said we received three bids and two bids were selected by the evaluation committee. Concord Square Planning and Development received a highly advantageous rating. The, the committee feels very comfortable with this contractor. A motion was made by Councillor Clemens and seconded by Mrs. Petrelli. Favorable recommendation to Council to approve the contract between the Town of Southbridge and Concord Square Planning and Development for the Downtown Strategic Financing and Implementation Plan Consultation Services in the amount of $79,583 and sent to Council for ratification. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. Agenda item number seven. Vote to approve the contract with Community Preservation Association and Community Opportunities Group for Master Plan Consultation Services. Mrs. Ackley said they received five proposals and selected two to interview. The two selected received a highly advantageous rating. Community Pres Preservation Association received a slightly higher score and was selected by the committee. Mrs. Ackley said that our demographic status which is 57% low to moderate income, allowed for full funding with CDBG money. Not many communities qualify for this funding. A motion was made by Councillor Clements, seconded by Mrs. Petrelli with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the contract between the Town of Southbridge and Community Preservation Association and Community Opportunities Group for master plan consultation services in the amount of $110,000 and send to council for ratification. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, three to nothing. Agenda item number eight, review proposed zoning map changes at 80 Marcy Street and 114 Pleasant Street. The planning board has scheduled a public hearing to implement the changes. A motion was made by Mrs. Petrelli, seconded by Councillor Clemens, that upon completion of a successful public hearing on April 18, 2012, and upon recommendation from the Planning Board, the Planning and Development Subcommittee recommends that the first reading commence at the Council meeting of April 23, 2012. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, three to nothing. There was a correction. Mrs. Ackley says, said the terms of appointment should have been scattered on agenda items two, three, and five and re requested a motion to amend. A motion was made by Councillor Clements and seconded by Mrs. Petrelli to amend agenda item two, three, and five to revise dates as follows. Agenda item number two, amend Mr. Prohaska's term to two years expiring 6, 30, four, uh, June 30th, 2014. Agenda item number three, amend Ms. Kader's term to one year expiring June 30th, 2013. Agenda item number five, amend Mr. Knoyer's term to two years expiring June 30th, 2014. A motion to adjourn was made by Mrs. Petrelli and seconded by Councillor Clements. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor three to nothing. Chairman Livingood adjourned the meeting at 7.20 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. Um, and that's all I have there. Madam Chair? Yes. It's a question regarding the minutes. <clears throat> and most of these, there's just what the motion was in the vote. Was there any discussion that was held during the meeting relative to these? I will have to go, I will have to defer to Council Clem uh, Clements. I was not present at this meeting. Yes. Council Clements? There was discussion on every item. And I was going to actually bring up the, the motion to amend, and that was based on um, when Ms. Agley came in a few minutes after. Uh, we started, then we noticed that the, we didn't realize the dates were not quite correct. So then we made the motion. We did vote to accept that amendment on that. So that's missing on there. But um, so that should be added. I would think that uh, it was all in favor to amend those those uh, items. But there was um, discussion on each okay. of the uh, items, especially, and we did have them add in. We made sure that uh, Evelyn, uh, the, excuse me, Ms. Rivera, the recording clerk, commented on the percentages and that this, there was no money involved from the, the town um, in terms of the funding for these contracts that were awarded. So those things were added. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, well, I, I, I have some concerns with this. Uh, I raised this issue uh, two meetings ago relative to that these minutes are the record of the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I did not do it with any malice at all. I did it because it's my duty as a public servant to point out, uh, we all received a letter from the recording clerk saying basically what I thought was defiant. 
Uh, okay, and, before and you go any further, Counselor, this is um, definitely not something that we are going to discuss. She is an employee. It is not something we discuss in open meeting. If you have something that you wish to bring forth to the town manager regarding this after the meeting, I would suggest you do it then. It well, is against the rules and regulations to discuss a public a town, a town employee at, at this meeting. Okay. So I prefer okay. that we don't. Well, okay, then I'll, but I will still state that uh, the, the items that govern the keeping of minutes is the Secretary of State and Mass General Laws, not Robert's Rules, mm -hmm. and that I would expect that our minutes would, would do as such. And as I said, anything further you need to discuss after the meeting, okay? All right. Very Thank well, you. Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate yep. it. Okay. Um, okay, one more. Subcommittee report E, Protection of Persons and Property. That would be Councillor Langevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no report, but I do have a meeting scheduled for next Tuesday. 7 o'clock in the Rice Conference Room to start reviewing the Police Department and Fire Department's uh, budget. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. That's the 17th? Yes. Counselor? Thank you. Okay, agenda item number five, Chairwoman's announcements. Um, I believe it was in the newspaper this evening, but for anybody who didn't get an opportunity to see it, um, we have trees that ha are coming in to be planted in the area in the areas that were dan were affected by the tornado those trees will be coming in on April 21st at the Kennedy Donovan Center I know that, that um, the people that are organizing all of this are looking for as many volunteers that wish to participate in this project um, I believe that Mike Murray is the um, coordinator. If you have any questions, I recommend that you give him a call and see what you can do to help. That's all I have right now. I'm going to turn it over to the town manager with his announcements. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do have uh, several announcements and a uh, presentation tonight, but I, I will endeavor to, to go quickly through them. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, with the dry weather we're having, I would just ask everybody to really show a significant amount of restraint for any kind of local fire or any kind of fire that you're going to have on your property. And please just, you know, feel free to contact the fire department to, uh, to check in terms of the status. Um, but just with some of the weather and, and some of the situation we had with the tornado last year, I think uh, due diligence is, is definitely called for uh, this season. Next, um, I did receive from the International Institute of Municipal Clerks that that organization has designated April 29th through May 5th, 2012 as Municipal Clerks Week. Um, so just wanted to uh, pass that along that um, from April 29th to May 5th is designated as Municipal Clerks Week and I know uh, the town clerk has participated in this uh, association. So maybe during that week, just uh, if you have occasion to be by the office, just let them know how they're how they're doing, both the uh, clerk and the deputy clerk. We also received um, some material from National Grid on the um, natural gas side that uh, National Grid will be performing replacement work of our gas mains and gas services in the various neighborhoods uh, from 236 to 313 Denison Drive, 16 to 52 Locust Ave, 43 to 51 Beach Street, and 357 to 367 South Street. Uh, that work actually started uh, a tentative start time of April 2nd and a tentative ending date of May 2nd, 2012. So if you do see some uh, disruptions in those areas, uh, just be aware that that's what is being done. Most of the time that work is, has a uh, police detail assigned to it to uh, help with the flow of traffic. Also, the town has, uh, has participated in and has some of the key members of the group uh, called TriEpic um, and the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency for State Emergency Response Commission has designated um, that the certification for the TriEpic group has been extended to October 1st, 2015. So just wanted to uh, pass that along that the folks there at TriEpic do do a, um, a, a very good job for us and they have received a full certification that is run from uh, October 14th, 2010 and expiring on October 1st, 2015. 
And this certification came from uh, the Commonwealth of Mass signed by Kurt Schwartz, the director of MEMA. Margaret Morrissey had sent over some material that, um, it's funny how this stuff always creeps up on us. Uh, this week is uh, celebrate National Library Week, April 8th to the 14th. So we're, we're in the process of National Library Week. And we will be celebrating at the Jacob Edwards Library. Uh, communities across the U.S. are celebrating the valuable contributions of the nation's libraries during National Library Week. This year's theme is you belong with the at symbol at your library. Libraries are transforming lives by providing patrons the tools needed to compete and thrive in the 21st century marketplace. Uh, the libraries continue to provide traditional resources and services, but now patrons will find bookshelves, bookshelves neighboring computer labs and wireless environments. And people should know that the Jacob Edwards Library does offer free 24-7 Wi-Fi. Uh, so there will be some activities going on this week as well as uh, next week during uh, school vacation week. So for details, please go to the library website for additional information. Lastly, I have a uh, just hopefully a fairly quick presentation up on the screen. Uh, this is an effort to uh, assist the town in its marketing. Uh, this is a draft of what we're looking at doing. Uh, the council is aware of some of the activities that will be brought up in this slide, but the idea behind this slide, it will put it on the website, maybe even put it on to um, kind of a YouTube type of video if we can do that. Certainly I can't do that, but we'll have to find someone who can. And basically what we wanna do is just uh, welcome people to the uh, Southbridge Technology and Environmental Park. Uh, this is centered around centered around the newly constructed commercial drive. As you can see on, on this map, which is a little bit difficult to see, in the blue area on the bottom is approximately 45 acres that we are attempting to develop now. That's actually a phase one development opportunities. There will be a, uh, an enlargement. The road itself actually goes as like a, a reverse candy cane. That section of it is complete. And then there is possibilities from, this was the plan that was put together by Fuss and O'Neill that shows other potential development opportunities. Everything in yellow uh, displayed on there is a potential development opportunity. Certainly the airport proper itself is already dedicated as an airport. So we, it's obviously developable because we have an airport on it. Uh, but some of the other areas uh, do show that. And if we go to the next, uh, what is the Southbridge Technology and Environmental Park? Uh, the main corridor throughout the site is Commercial Drive, which is newly constructed. It includes industrial-sized uh, roadway, public water and sewer, and three-phase electrical. We are looking to try to develop smaller lots, which be suitable for professional and technical service industries, medical offices, self-storage facilities, specialized manufacturing, and service retail. The master plan proposes several street link, uh, several street links, including Commercial Drive, Pleasant Street, and Clements Hill Road, to potentially uh, develop portions of the step, the Southbridge Technology and Environmental Park. Larger lots would be attractive for manufacturing, warehousing, and distribution facilities, professional office buildings, and large storage centers. And here we have a few schematics that you've actually seen uh, previously members of the council, but just for the general public. Uh, the options, they laid out a few options, Fuss and O'Neill. This option would be one that more centers around having several smaller developments go into the industrial park. Again, this is just on that 40, 40 to 45 acre piece uh, that we currently have or in the process of attempting to sell. Uh, the area that's highlighted in the, uh, the yellow highlighter is the uh, A&R area, approval, uh, approval not required, which means that those are buildable lots that are basically ready to go now. Uh, we are in the process of, uh, the council has already voted some of this in terms of uh, starting the process, so we are starting to put together the necessary pieces uh, to have these be marketed. Um, one, so a couple of the steps, we've sent out a memo to the various town boards and committees to see if anyone has any use for it. Uh, no one has responded back favorably, so that would mean that it could be sold off, available for disposition. Uh, so we have um, that area that would be ready to go. Uh, we also have um, a appraisal that's being done on the property, 
and that appraisal should be returned. Uh, I think it's sometime this week that we expect it. So we'll have that to bring to the council. And then the last thing is we've uh, commenced some work to do meets and bounds and to actually lay out what the buildable lots would be in this, in this area. So we are um, moving, even though we don't always report on this each week or each other, every other week, uh, we are making progress and as we get closer, we will report and update the council. Option three shows basically the same parcel with a slightly different configuration. And in this configuration, uh, you'll see in the, um, the left-hand corner, a much larger building that's situated on 11 and a quarter acres. Uh, so this would allow for a larger, um, a larger building, a larger tenant to occupy that area. Again, you have the approval not required area in the southern section of the slide. And then the build outs uh, show slightly bigger parcels. Uh, so the idea would be to have more of a uh, mixed mixed uh, use uh, design in terms of how we would lay this out where we have larger develop, developed sites and smaller, uh, perhaps more incubator sites. Why choose Southbridge? Uh, you'll see in the upper left hand corner that we are home to uh, several uh, fairly good businesses that are located in the community. This is just a, uh, a small scattering of who we have in the community currently. Uh, some of the reasons for Southbridge, uh, we believe it's a safe community with a dedication to public education. Uh, we are currently have the new middle high school under construction. It'll be open in the fall of 2012. Uh, the community, uh, community enriched with several economically diverse opportunities in many service sectors, manufacturing and education. We also serve as the home to Harrington Memorial Hospital, a large medical regional resource. We are a full service government, especially in comparison to some of our neighbors. We do offer full service in terms of police, fire, Department of Public Works, a newly renovated water treatment facility and wastewater treatment plant. We have a uh, library as well as the uh, Cohasi Country Club. We are strategically located with uh, close access to routes, uh, Route 90, Route 20, um, Interstate 84, and Interstate 395 with convenient access to um, air larger cities in the area. The housing stock is not only, we have a family friendly housing stock, but we also have what I've dubbed a uh, CEO friendly area in the community uh, that's located, some nice houses located up by the, uh, the golf course. We are a uh, cultural diverse community with over 70 historic sites, including Notre Dame Church, Spanish American War Monument, Veterans M Memorial, and our firehouse Probably should have town hall on there as well. We also, for diversity, have an uh, active nightlife, uh, including uh, Mill Street Brews and the recently built or rebuilt uh, 12 Crane, uh, which contains the uh, Dark Horse Tavern, uh, Bentley Brewing, and a few other activities. And then we have, uh, we are approximately 21 square miles, an eclectic blend of developed land, industry, downtown, with suburban, urban, and rural neighborhoods. The next slide just shows that geographic image where we are less than an hour away from, Wor uh, from Springfield, about a half hour away from Worcester, less than an hour from Hartford, three hours from New York City, an hour and 10 minutes from Providence, and an hour and 15 minutes from Boston. So if you do have a business that has a lot of interaction between Hartford and Boston, or New York City and points north, uh, we do offer a uh, strategic location when it comes to um, that type of industry. Just a few, I'm not gonna read all these, but we do uh, socially, we are a fairly young population. We have 17,517 people, uh, a fairly large amount of 25 and over. Uh, the median age is 36.1. You hear about down in Florida and some other places where the median age is well north of that. So we are a younger community. <clears throat> in terms of the population, <clears throat> In the, uh, we have 16 years and over, 64.8% of our population. And we do have a, uh, an available workforce of 756 people uh, as of right now. And the last slide is the scheduled opening in the fall of 2012 of the uh, Southbridge, Southbridge's new middle slash high school uh, that will be uh, completed and open come uh, September of 2012. 
And this is a draft, so the idea behind this, actually, I guess we have one more. <clears throat> and this just show, shows the uh, campus footprint on the slide. You can see to the left, there's a uh, softball field, a baseball field, and tennis courts. In the center is, a, is the facility itself, of just under 200,000 square feet, uh, situated in, a, um, in an area that is a wooded area that has a lot of um, environmental uh, areas of environmental interest. And then to the right-hand uh, right side of the screen, there are two soccer fields, and then the one on the far right is a football field with a track. Uh, that track is gonna be regulation, so we will be able to host various uh, high school um, athletic events in the community where currently, it's my understanding, we cannot. So um, certainly, I, I think the school is one that if your business inter interested in locating to the community, you have um, the knowledge that a, a brand new school will be coming online. Again, that's a draft, so just wanted to kind of see what the people's feedback would be in regards to that, you at home or you in the audience or members of the council if you want to email or, or drop a line or phone in any comments or um, things that we can elaborate, be more than interested in constructive feedback. That concludes my comments this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Clark. Okay, agenda item number seven. Swearing in presentation portion of the uh, our meeting. And A will be postponed until the um, 23rd. Till, till, um, our next meeting. Ms. Ms. T. Berry is not able to attend this evening, so we'll schedule that for the next meeting. B is a presentation. Um, it's an update from Centros Las Americas. Juan Gomez. Mr. Gomez, would you please go to the podium? Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, Mr. Clark, uh, members of the audience, and, and those attending at home. My name is Juan Gomez, and I'm the president and CEO of Centro Las Americas, which has been around on June 24th of this year, we'll be celebrating our 35th anniversary. So it's uh, hard to believe. Um, so CLA, just a little bit of background, is located in the heart of Worcester, um, in the heart of Worcester County, which is in Worcester. CLA serves over 14,000 uh, people, individuals in 2001 through its food pantry. We operate the second largest food pantry in Worcester, the first one is Friendly House in Worcester as well. Um, CLA also provides Thanksgiving baskets and toys during Christmas time uh, to the families that we serve. It was founded in 1977, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, and is the largest Latino nonprofit organization in central Massachusetts. <clears throat> Centro has evolved into a multi-service regional agency. We provide not just the food pantry, which I talked about, but we provide programs like the Latino Elder Program, which we've replicated here and is the subject of the update. We also provide information and referral to other clients. The Institute of Latino Art and Culture in Worcester, which organizes the Latin American Festival, um, the Worcester, the Latino Film Festival, as well as Viva el Arte, which is a judged exhibit. We provide case management services to families and adolescents involved with the Department of Mental Health, the Department of Children and Families, and the Department of Developmental Services. Um, we have clinical programs, uh, which I will describe in a little more detail further on. We now have offices in Worcester, we have office in Fitchburg, and we have our program here in Southbridge. <clears throat> in the next uh, section of the presentation, it talks a little bit about the operating expenses of the organization, where 43% of the of the of uh, um, uh, 43 percent of the budget was used for family services, 26 percent for programs that we call uh, community services, such as the Latino Elder Program, information and referral and other programs like that. Um, uh, and our management in general is around 15 percent, which is less than other organizations, a lot of other organizations. <clears throat> CLA's annual budget, when we started in 2000 and 
um, 10, so for 2011, so for this budget year, is $1.2 million. Um, the organizations that support our uh, programs uh, and the, the funding agencies that support our programs are the Town of Southbridge, of course, and we thank you very much for it, Central, Las, uh, Central Mass Agency on Aging, the Greater Worcester Community Foundation, the St. Francis Healthcare Foundation, the City of Worcester, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the United States government through block grant funding, um, UMass Memorial Healthcare, VNA Care Network, and United Healthcare. Um, today, CLA employs approximately 25 full-time equivalent employees. And um, Roxana will give you a little bit of the uh, update of the program itself. Good evening. Good night, everybody. Um, buenas noches a todos. Como, like uh, Juan Gomez said, I am the coordinator of Latino Elder Program in Southbridge. It's been a nice experience. We have now 30 members. Uh, we start January 5th, and tomorrow I have a great uh, event. We are going to the bowling place, bowling valley, with the, I, I hope, 25 people. We are going to be there from 10 to, uh, to 11. Then we are going back to the senior center to have lunch. Um, I hear a lot of good um, comments about the program. Our goal is to take the people out of the houses and do something different and different activities in the senior center. It was, we are doing crafts. Um, I have a, a nice gift for the town hall from the people, and I'm going to give it today, but I will give it to Rose Canoyer that is in charge of that. And um, like I said, thank you for the opportunity for the program. We are trying to be a bigger group with the members, and I'm doing a lot of outreach there and um, soon I hope will be not 30, 50. Thank you. Gracias. Um, briefly, I just want to mention to you some of the organizations that we're working with locally so that uh, to avoid duplication but to enhance the program, working with Tri Valley Elder Services, the Center of Hope, local li religious leaders, lo uh, some folks in the local business community, and state agencies to not only provide the program that we promised that we would provide to the residents of the town of Southwood, but also to enhance the, the program availability through some of our contracts with to some of the residents of the area that are not necessarily elderly and participate in this program. <clears throat> CLA is working to develop uh, some of its other programs and services both to increase its uh, presence in Southbridge as well as to complement our program in the Latino Elder Program. Some of the uh, uh, contracts that we have with the state, which we are going, uh, working to expand those services to the area, our contract with the Department of Children and Families. We've had a number of meetings with uh, the Whitensville office, which is the office from DCF that covers this area, and they're very much interested in, in continuing to refer clients to us. The Department of Mental Health, Central Las Americas, just secured a contract for four additional services to adolescents uh, that receive services through, through the Department of Mental Health and have that diagnosis of mental health services. Um, <clears throat> through a partnership with UINC, which is a lar larger provider in the region, we're now providing uh, individual and family therapy for families and children uh, through the Children's Behavioral Health Initiative. We're currently providing those two services, but we're looking forward to expanding that to provide two additional services, as well as uh, Central Las Americas was approved for a program after we implemented our program here called Adult Foster Care or Adult Family Care. And through that program, we'll be able to provide some additional support to the care providers of some of these seniors that live within their home to continue to provide those services and extend the time that their home delay any um, institutionalization and provide continued dignity and for these families to, to stay together. So we are very much committed to the town of Southbridge. We're very much committed to not just our seniors and our program, but we're committed to, to uh, the air residents in the area. And at this point, if you have any questions, I'd love to entertain them. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Councilor Clements? 
Um, I just want to applaud you. I hear very good things down at the Senior Center. I attend generally, actually, I'm thinking maybe I should stop in and, and see your program too, because I stop in and see the, the senior luncheons usually once a month, but I have yet to be there when you're doing your program, so uh, that would be wonderful. I, but I hear very good things, and I hear the partnership, as I would call it, is working very well, and you get your seniors very engaged and active, and, and I think that's wonderful that. Um, we have this opportunity to work together, have uh, a public building and, and um, a great organization and, and seniors of all, of all uh, backgrounds, you know, to be able to get together and, and work together in our community. We do have plenty of seniors and they could certainly use the services. So we applaud you for your efforts here locally and for everything else you're doing. I didn't realize you were um, quite that extended out with all the other services. So uh, we appreciate having having you here in our community and in providing such service for those who need it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please don't be a stranger. We love these updates. Mm, thank, thank you. Goodness. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Um, presentation of Tassie's. Mr. Tassie wasn't able to attend this evening, so we're going to postpone that until the next council meeting as well. And from there, I'd like to go to agenda item number eight, Citizens Forum. Do we have any citizens in the audience that wish to come forward this evening. Um, hi, Maureen Doyle. Oh, hi, Maureen Doyle, <laughs> 771 Lebanon Hill. Um, many people have asked me uh, where the chickens are and the chicken bylaw. <laughs> um, and so I'm wondering where they are where the chicken bylaw is. It's my understanding that the planning board was going to send their recommendations in to the council in February or March, and um, which were six hens, no roosters, on three-fourths of an acre. Um, and I'm just wondering where they are. I don't, I'm just I don't have anything. I, I honestly don't I can't know. answer that, to be honest okay. with you, Ms. Doyle. Okay. I haven't seen anything at this point. <laughs> I think I can answer that question. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Saved again. The planning board actually has prepared a letter and was just revised this past Wednesday so that it will be absolutely perfect before it comes to you okay. because the planning board is actually um, making two suggestions for your consideration. One of them would be a bylaw with certain conditions, um, as Ms. Doyle uh, mentioned. Um, but the other one would be, in lieu of that for now, uh, taking a suggestion which was brought by Health Director Morin, which would be to allow a couple of um, families to raise chickens in their, for their households uh, by special permit. And that, we actually have an existing bylaw, uh, zoning bylaw called 501.1, .1, which allows us to take um, special projects and consider them for special permits. So we had to address the letter in such a way that it would be very clear what we were doing. And so that is actually uh, just about ready. Mr. Payer, the new chairman, will come in and sign it. Then it will go on to you and go through the regular processes that normally one does. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Doyle. Does anybody else wish to come forward? Any other citizens wish to approach the podium? Okay, we're gonna move on then. Agenda item number nine. Vote to approve the appointment of Mark Morin to the Economic Development Commission effective immediately for a three-year term to expire June 30th, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? We have a roll call, please. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. Gender item number 10, vote to approve the appointment of Otto Prohaska to the Economic Development Commission effective immediately for a two-year term to expire June 30th, 2014. So, second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. 
Agenda item number 11, vote to approve the appointment of Nancy Kader to the Economic Development Commission effective immediately for a one-year term to expire June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. Any discussion? We have a roll call on that, please. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 12, vote to approve the appointment of James Dyer to the Economic Development Commission effective immediately for a three-year term to expire June 30th, 2015. So moved. Any, dis Second. any discussion? All, um, roll call, please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 13, vote to approve the appointment of Pierre Pete Knoyer to the Economic Development Commission, effective immediately for a three-year term to expire June 30th, 2015. So moved. Second. Uh, Madam Chair, is this supposed to be corrected to a two-year term? Good question. Let's take a look. Because on the minutes, it was... It was. So it Mr. would be 30 yes. 14. Uh, um, I'm going to make an... Uh, a correction. It should read, effective immediately for a two-year term to expire June 30th, 2014. Could I have um, Madam Chair. a motion to make that amendment to the vote? So moved. And Second. Point of clarification. Yes. I heard there was two people who moved the question, myself and somebody else, and then I seconded it because I didn't know who got picked up as the, as the Stacey, primary. Stacy, who? who we had one person uh, make the motion on the original vote. I have Correct. Councilor McDonald making okay. the motion okay. for the original. Okay. I thought I heard Conrad at the same time, but I was the second as well, so somebody else will need a second. Okay. I, I wrote down Councilor Langevin for the second. Okay. okay. I kind of heard four. Okay. I, Very good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I, I pick and choose. Thank okay. Sorry, sorry for the confusion. I caused it. Not a problem. So here we're just going to um, vote on the amendment to this vote. So I have a, a motion for the amendment to the vote second. and a second. Thank you, Councillor Spinelli. Any discussion? Could we have a roll call on that, please? Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Marcucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Now, the vote to approve the appointment of Pierre Pete Canoya to the Economic Development Commission effective immediately for a two-year term to expire June 30th, 2014. So moved. No. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Isn't government fun? <laughs> Go ahead. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Marcucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 14, vote to ratify the contract with Concord Square Planning and Development for the downtown strategic financing and implementation plan consultation services in the amount of $79,583. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 15, vote to ratify the contract with Community Preservation Association and Community Opportunities Group for master plan services in the amount of $110,000. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to say that I'm glad to see this uh, come forward. This is being done with grant money. This is something that I've been an advocate for while I was on the Redevelopment Authority and uh, something that I had uh, campaigned for. And uh, I'm just very happy to see it here and happy to cast my vote in the affirmative because I think this is going to be a good thing for Salisbury in the long run. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Any other discussion? Okay. Can we have a roll call, please? Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Um, before I go on to Councilor's Forum, I'd like to thank um, Mrs. Ackley for being here this evening. Appreciate that. 
And I'd also like to thank all of the people who have been appointed to the Economic Development Commission this evening. I thank you in advance for your service. Agenda item number 16 is Councillor's Forum. I'd like to start this evening with Councillor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm all set this evening. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Vandal? Um, I think that we need to look at the uh, flaws pertaining to trash. I mean, I've had a number of people call me and tell me that they had a $250 fine. I don't, and these people, some of them weren't given a warning. I don't think you, we should slap a $250 fine on, on people the first, sh first shot. You know, I don't know what committee it should go to or whatever, but this got to be hashed out. You know, I've got an, a lot of calls, and one of the gentlemen told me that there's a guy that goes around town and he goes through trash, and he took trash bag out of his, you know, uh, bucket, and he, and he left it on the ground when he left. And then the police come by, and they ticketed it, and he, and he got a $250 fine. And he said he's not paying it. And they said, well, we'll cut the fine down. He said, I'm not paying it. So, you know, we're going to have to sit down and, and really hash this out and get to the bottom. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's all I have. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Clements, is it possible, I know that you have a very busy schedule with the budget coming up, but could we see if it's possible at some time in the very near future to put on your agenda for your subcommittee, possibly having um, Mr. Morin and anybody else that's involved in this process, including the officer that, that goes around, come to the subcommittee meeting to um, field some questions because um, Councillor Vandal is not the only one who's getting phone calls like that. I've, I've received quite a few myself, and I, I would like to be able to clarify, seeing as this council did approve this program, I, I'd like to be able to have a, a question and answer period with the people who are, are implementing that program. Can we do that? Yeah, I have no problem with that. As a matter of fact, it's been um, on my uh, radar for a little bit here. I had some discussion with the town manager. I've had some discussion with the police chief and a number of citizens myself number of suggestions I've, uh, I've brought forward, and I really do think it's time that we, uh, we look at the numbers and we look at the process to make sure that is benefiting the community that, that it should be, and also obviously um, com making people comply with those who don't comply and need to comply, because you know, we all need to be accountable, as I continue to say, but we certainly want to make sure that we are um, doing the right thing for all the citizens. So, and I know that a number of people have concerns, including a number of department people. So. I have no problem with that. Um, I'll just have to figure out the, the date and time sooner the better. Thursday's meeting, I, while we could add something and, and change it up right now and get it posted, it might be a little full. Yeah. But uh, let me see what I can work out in the next okay. week because yeah, Very good. the sooner the better. I appreciate Thank you. that. Thank you, Councillor. Yep. Okay. Um, Councillor McDonald? Are you, are you through, Councillor? Okay. Thank you. Thank Councillor you. McDonald? Thank you, Madam Chair. I, too, received a number of calls in... Uh, the, you know, I, I remember when that issue came before the council and I voted against doing that. Um, I said before we shouldn't be using law enforcement for non-criminal activity. Um, they should not be utilized in that capacity. But I'll reserve more comment on that for, for a later time. I'm glad to see that we're going to address it because mm -hmm. it's my understanding that when I looked into it and asked a the question, there were over 120 fines issued and about 60 of those being appealed. Okay. When I started getting calls and I started asking the questions, and uh, that's, to me, uh, quite excessive. Uh, on another note, I got a number of calls and also saw a letter to the editor in the paper again regarding the covers of, our, of the trash cans. And I've got to tell you, I had to take my trash can cover uh, two pickup cycles ago and re reform it with my foot because it had been run over by a car because it was dumped in the street. My neighbor's was totally destroyed. Uh, and then there's the other counselors who have addressed concerns. And, and so I think, you know, we've been talking about this. I feel like Groundhog Day all over again because we've been talking about it for several weeks. Weeks We really need to get this under control with Casella. Mm -hmm. um, we've asked people to spend good money on mm -hmm. these bins. And, and, and as an aside, I'll tell you, I got a call from somebody who told me that you can buy covers if you lose one from somebody in Woodstock because the wind tends to blow them down that way. I mean, no kidding. <laughs> somebody actually told me that. So anyway. Other than that, I, I know we didn't uh, address it tonight, but it was on the agenda. Just want to congratulate Corinne Tiberi for uh, 25 years of service and thank her for her service. And uh, that's all I have for this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Spinelli. I'm one of those councillors who um, consistently calls the manager or calls the Board of Health complaining about people who put out trash that is not in barrels. And every Monday when I go to work, and I'll be very honest to admit it, every Monday when I go to work, I call up for the same houses on River Street, and it's very frustrating. And I used to call up for a house on Elm Street, and they received two fines, but now they have all of their trash in clear plastic bags, in barrels, and it looks wonderfully neat. Um, I think there's a benefit to it too. I'm also concerned about the barrels and I agree that it should be looked at. But I think people who do not comply with a bylaw that's been in existence for umpteen number of years, I think that's wrong also. And um, so I, I, I think we should look at this, but we've had this bylaw for years and we've never tried to enforce it and we have garbage and we can still drive around South Beach and you can see tons of litter all over the place and to me, um, that's just not an acceptable thing. Um, my other concern would be on um, a number of months ago I asked about, um, and I know that the construction time is just beginning now, but um, I asked about the DPW looking at 388 Worcester Street for a sunken um, grate that's in the ground that's kind of dangerous to, uh, I backed over it and luckily I had my truck rather than, so my wife said, what was that? I said, no problem, it's a truck. But um, if I had my van, I think I would have been concerned about it. Um, so if I know that the season is just starting, I know there's lots of projects scheduled, but if somebody could just um, briefly give me an update and just let me know about when it's gonna happen, that would be nice. Vandal's Thank you. Include that in his agenda Thanks, God. For the DPW subcommittee meeting, okay? Yep. And you're all through? Yes, thank you. Council Landry? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just kind of piggybacking on off of other councils really quick and briefly. I'm I'm still a big big fan and I'd still like to proceed and move forward with trash pickup one day a week. Swipe sweep the whole town one day and end it. Um, I believe in the past it worked very well. Instead of seeing different sections, uh, you know, different day a week, trash here, trash there. Sweep the town, get it all over, clean it up, and I bet you it'll be much easier to find or reg watch people instead of having trash all just all over the place. Sweep the town one day, whether it's a Tuesday, there should be no trash out in town the rest of the week except for if it's Monday night, you put it out, and that's it. I just, it's just getting old of trash. Trash here, trash there. It looks like a dump. And if it looks like a dump, it starts feeling like a dump. Um, and I'm a real strong believer of that. So if we can look into that and uh, push forward, I'd really appreciate it. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Clements? Thank you. Um, well, might as well go to the trash. A um, couple things. I, the, you know, the smart cart had a cover that was attached. And a lot of, I noticed a lot of people who seem to be buying containers are starting to buy the containers with the covers attached. They've got nice hinges. They stay on. Um, wind blows. Wind blows those covers. And even if you put the cover on the container, as we do, and we've done, um, we've seen the trash people even do sometimes, not always. Usually they just stick it in and leave it. And the wind blows your can over, then your cover goes out too. So. That cover situation is going to be a problem no matter what we try to do and no matter how much we try to um, get the employees of the trash hauler to do it right. Although I still feel we should be making sure that somebody mentions to the trash hauler that their employees have to follow um, the rules of, of trash pickup. Um, it's my understanding that because of the trash cans, I've said this before, the illegal dumping is becoming a... Um, is definitely visible because what's happening is those people who are getting fined and they take a picture uh, when the police do issue a ticket they take a picture of what's going on and then they show the homeowner and the homeowner says 
that's not my trash, I put mine in the can. See the can? Where are the bags coming from? And there are people that are still coming into our town to work and leaving their bags next to other people's trash cans. Hence, the ticket gets written for the homeowner, unsuspectingly, because maybe they've gone off to work and they don't know this. So again, if you see this type of activity in your area, if you put your trash in cans and you see an extra bag, contact the Board of Health office, let them know, and certainly appeal and discuss your ticket issues as is offered. Um, I did not agree with the fine system. Not that, you know, go, we can go back and forth on that. Originally, I still don't agree. I think the numbers are still off, and I think there are some other alternatives um, that we can help the citizens out, and I look forward to having that discussed at the meetings. Um, I do also think one day pickup is wonderful. But on that, you know, um, we just have to get it, get it figured out and uh, keep our town looking good. On a really positive note, something that we kind of overlooked slightly at the last meeting, and we want to make sure we didn't overlook at this meeting, and, and that is a wonderful uh, award was given in our community. Uh, on Thursday, March 15th, the Thomas Green Award for Public Service was given to Sergeant Jose Dingy of our local police force. Sergeant Dingy, this is an award that's given out in uh, Worcester. He was one of four recipients, the only one from our area. The others were from the Worcester area. This award is given annually by the Research Bureau for Outstanding Contributions in Public Service. And as we know, um, Sergeant Dingy has not only been on our police force for over 15 years, he also is a driving force behind the Cops and Kids program, which is a wonderful uh, uh, program to help reduce juvenile delinquency and obviously to build stronger relationships, relationships between the youth of our community and the police department. Um, to give them a place to go and, and to someone to hopefully listen when they have issues that uh, before they get out of hand. So um, I'm just making sure that uh, we tell Sergeant Dingy that we really appreciate this. We, we respect you so much in our community and we applaud you for all your outstanding work that you have done and you are very deserving of this award. I wish I could have been there. I know the, the town manager did go and the chief did go. There were a number of people who did attend. Um, I was out of town. Um, but congratulations and apologize for this being a little bit late, but uh, better late than never. And uh, keep up the good work. And that's it. Thanks. That's all. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Clements. Okay. Agenda item number 17, discussion of the next meeting date, yeah, which meeting is? Day. April. How about we do April 23rd? Sounds you like lovely. that. Seven o'clock here in Council Chambers. Very good. Thank Super. you. <laughs> and Thank you. Last but not least, adjourn. Second. All in favor? It's like pulling Meetings adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>